Hello, uh, Calculus 12 students. Um, this is Mr. Yoon with another uh, Calculus uh, video tutorial. And in this uh, video lesson, I'll be going over something called the, the washer method. Now, the washer method is very similar to the disk method. And basically, uh, the washer and disk method, what they do is uh, they allow you to calculate the volume of objects when you're rotating uh, a certain object or a certain region over the x or y axes. Now, in order to kind of uh, get the washer method uh, started off, I like uh, kind of I would like to kind of start off the the lesson with a very basic example of calculating the volume of a cylinder. So, in this example, I want to cal I want to calculate the volume of this green cylinder. Uh, but one small problem is that we do have this hole in the middle. Okay, so I want to calculate the volume of a, of a cylinder with a hole in the middle to get us started to, to in order to get us started for the washer method lesson here. Okay, so uh, before we kind of get started with uh, finding the volume here, um, I know that the height of my cylinder is going to be 9 millimeters, and uh, I know the diameter is going to be 7 millimeters, so that means the radius of the uh, bigger cylinder is going to be uh, 3.5 millimeters. And um, since I have this uh, small circle in the middle here, and that has a diameter of 3 millimeters, then that means my radius, I'll use a little r here, the radius of that is going to be 1.5 millimeters. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and calculate the volume of this cylinder with the hole in the middle. And in order to find the volume of, the, of this kind of a cylinder, basically I need to find the volume of the big cylinder, and then I need to minus that from the volume of the small cylinder. Okay, so hopefully you can see that if I do calculate the volume of the entire cylinder and then minus the volume of the cylinder that's in the middle, then that would give me the volume of the of this green cylinder right here. Okay, all right. So what's the volume for um, a cylinder? Well, it's going to be pi times the radius squared times the height. And for my big cylinder, I know the radius is going to be r, and then I need to square that, and then I also need to times that by the height. Now for the volume of the small guy, it's the same formula, it's going to be pi times r squared h, and this time my radius is going to be a little r, and then I'll square that and times it by the height. Okay. Now before I uh, continue here, I'm just going to rearrange uh, some of the, the variables here and some of the constants. Um, I have a pi on both terms, so what I'm, going to do, what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to factor it out in the front, and then I'm going to put a bracket with um, the... Uh, the radiuses, so I'll be radius squared, radius squared with the minus sign, close the bracket, and then I'm going to attach this height at the very end. Okay, so hopefully that, hopefully you can see that these two lines here, they're mathematically the same thing. I'm just going to write, I'm just going to rewrite the volume like this because this is how I'm going to approach a lot of the uh, problems in this video lesson here. Okay, so let's go ahead now and just uh, insert the numbers into this formula here. This is going to be pi. This is going to be a 3.5 squared minus 1.5 squared. Close the bracket, and my height here is going to be 9. And if I calculate this um, in my calculator, I should get around 282.743 millimeters cubed. Great. All right, so that's a very basic example of finding um, the volume of a cylinder with a hole in the middle. And uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to start talking about this washer method. Now, the washer method, um, well, actually, one of the reasons why I am, I'm asking students to find the volume of this type of cylinder is because the washer method is basically very similar to finding the volume of cylinders of this format with the hole in the middle. And um, very similar to the disk method is that I'm going to take this the cylinder here and I'm just going to kind of cut off a very small portion of this bigger cylinder and if I go ahead and just rewrite this or redraw the cylinder on the side here um, you'll notice that I, I will get something like this with the hole in the middle and then I might have this very small height that was also kind of uh, part of the, of the of this small cutout here so this right here is called a washer and if I can calc the if I can calculate the volume of this washer, which is um, pretty much the same thing as finding the volume of this green cylinder or, or this or the cylinder that we did, then um, I can definitely use this to help me find the volume of objects that are being created when I'm rotating certain functions around the x or y axes. Okay, so um, you know this right here is like your height. Sorry, maybe I'll just redraw this over here. But uh, sorry, uh, this part right here is your height. And throughout this lesson, um, we know the height in our 
in our example warm-up question was nine millimeters, but the height will sometimes be referred to as dx, or it might be referred to dy. Uh, sometimes the word thickness might be used as well. Okay, so um, anytime you see a dx or a dy throughout this lesson, that generally means the height of your washer or or the height of this cylinder with the hole in the middle. Okay. And uh, we will also have to kind of work with what we call the big radius, and um, we also need to know the, um, the radius of the smaller guy, little r. And if we know those kind of uh, factors, sorry, if we know those terms like the big r, the little r, and your height, then you can definitely find the volume of that one washer. Okay, and then once we can find the volume of one washer, then we can probably find the volume of other washers by simply integrating, which is very similar to the disk method. Okay, so this is what we're going to do for this lesson. We're going to be looking at washers, we're going to find the volume of the washers, and then we're going to try to find the volume of objects that are being created when we're rotating certain regions around the x or y axes. Alright, so let's move on here. Okay, so uh, for those students who are not familiar with a washer, um, a washer is basically, basically a little piece of hardware, and it's used in construction or building projects. Um, the washer generally takes the shape of a flat donut. And in calculus class, uh, the washer method will be used to help find the volume of a shape that is created by rotating two functions around the x or y axis. Okay, so key, uh, key line here might be the, uh, the, the terms two functions. And when we have two functions, generally you'll have like an area uh, between um, a region or a curve. So this is very similar to what we did in lesson number five, where we're, where we're trying to find the area between um, two, two functions, all right? And then we're going to rotate that around the x or y axes, and then we're some kind of a solid will, or a solid or shape will be formed when we do that. Okay. Well, so here's a top view of, this is a top view of a washer right here. And basically, I do want to derive the um, a formula for the volume of the washer. And uh, we know that the volume of any kind of object, or for most objects, is basically, um, sorry, not the base, but it's the area of the base, area of the base times the height. Okay. Now, how do I find the area of this shaded region right here? Well, if I want to find the area of that, which is going to be the area of the base here, um, I need to find... Um, basically, we have two circles, right? So if I find the area of the bigger circle, which is pi big R squared, and subtract that from the area of the smaller circle, which has a radius of little r, that will be my area of, of the shaded region, right? The shaded region right here in red here. Okay, so that's how I find the area of that shaded region. And if I want to find the volume, uh, this is very similar to the volume formula that I did uh, derive in the first example here, but this will be pi r squared minus pi little r squared times the height, and if I just re-derive this volume formula, I just take the pi's, I take the pi's and bring them out to the front, bracket big R squared minus little r squared times the height. Okay, so this right here is the key volume formula that I'll be using uh, throughout this lesson in order to find the volume of a washer. All right, all right, so let's move on now. Now, before I move on, um, when we, were, when we were working with the disk method, um, for the disk method, basically what's happening is you take a single function and you rotate that around the x or y axis in order to find the volume of that shape that's being generated. Now for the washer method, basically we're gonna be, we're not, be, we're not gonna rotate a single function, but we're gonna rotate the area, the area between two functions. That's gonna be rotated around the x or y axis, and then we'll have some kind of solid or um, some kind of shape being formed. Okay, so that's the key difference between the washer and the disk method, and that the washer method, we're gonna be rotating the area between two functions. All right, so let's take a look at what this really means. I do apologize, there is a typo here, visualizing the washer method. Okay, so maybe you recognize uh, this type of problem from the previous lessons, and in the previous lessons, I might ask you, what is the area between these two curves. Now, in order to find the area between those two curves, we had to identify um, the era, the boundaries of integration. So for this kind of question, let's just assume that we're integrating from point A to point B. Okay, so point B is uh, on the x-axis. 
So if I want to find uh, this area between region A and region B, ask yourself, between region A and region B, what part of the curve is the highest? Well, this green part looks to be the highest. So the highest part is generally called the top function, right? And, uh, and also from A to B, I mean, what part of the curve is actually the lowest? Well, I think most people will agree that this blue part is the lowest part, so we would label that the, the bottom function, I believe. Let me just erase this and write down the bottom function. The bottom function. Okay. Now, if I want to find um, the area between those curves, then I would just integrate from A to B, and I would take my top function, top fun minus the bottom, b o t t o m f u n. All right. So I take the top function minus the bottom function and integrate that with with respect to dx. This is how I would find the area of the Sorry, this is how I would find the area enclosed by those two functions, right? Now, for the washer method, this is the kind of uh, concept that we'll be dealing with. We're going to be looking at this area here. So if I just kind of delete all this. If I take this area right here in yellow, this area between two different functions here, and if I rotate that around the x or y axes, in this case, let's just rotate it on the x axis, I want to find the shape that's being generated, and then I want to find the volume of that shape that's being generated. Okay, so if I move over to the next diagram over here, this is the uh, area between the two functions, right? If I rotate that around the x axis, then well, I'll have an area below the x axis, which is symmetric to the area above the x axis. And then I'll have some kind of shape, this, this bowl being, I guess the, the shape that's being um, formed is this bowl. And in this bowl, I have this washer, all right? So here's this washer. Let me just kind of delete the colors now. But I have this uh, washer here because I have this hole in the middle, right? And so all these, these different types of washers are being generated. And once all the washers are stacked up next to each other, we have this shape that's being formed and we want to find the volume that's being generated or that volume that's being formed for that object. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here um, again. Um, here is the, this purple region represents the area between two curves and uh, this is like your top function and this is your bottom function. Okay, now if I continue to rotate this around the x-axis, What's going to happen is, is that I start to get this um, this washer that's being formed here. I'm just kind of highlighting that in blue right here. Okay, so this washer is being formed. So if I continue to rotate this around the x-axis, I'm going to get a full washer. See that? This is a full washer right here. Okay, you get a full washer being formed. Okay, and you'll notice that in these other regions, like this red region right here, and this blue region right here, and uh, this black region right here, these different regions. Uh, in that between the purple area those regions will also create other washers because these washers are being stacked up next to each other okay now if I go ahead and just focus on this diagram here and just kind of you know um, continue to stack the washers up next to each other then the diagram will look something like this right here okay um, notice that the washers are being stacked up next to each other and we're, we're getting this object that's being formed and uh, so these are just like the half washers that are being formed. And if I just kind of move the diagram over again, you'll notice that in this diagram, half the washers are full washers. And then I also have some of these half washers to kind of show you what, what's going on if we, if we continue to rotate, right? So you'll notice that in, on the inside, um, the washers get um, bigger and bigger and bigger if I go from left to right. Okay, so I have these full washers over here on the left hand side and I have these half washers on the right hand side. But hopefully this will help you visualize the shape that's being formed. Now if I fully, if I fully rotate the, uh, the area, that purple area around the x axis, I'll get this, this kind of looks like this, like this, this shape looks like a bowl to me, right? Like a cereal bowl, a sideways cereal bowl where you can, you know, put milk in the middle. And um, to me this looks like a cereal bowl. so. Uh, this is the object that's being generated when you stack up all the washers next to each other. Okay, so if you had a hard time kind of visualizing like what this thing is looking like, hopefully this diagram right here will kind of tell you what is being generated when all those washers are being stacked up next to each other. 
Now our goal for this lesson is that we want to find the volume of this shape right here. We want to find that volume. And in order to do that, we need to find the volume of one washer. So if we can find the mathematical relationship or put together a mathematical relationship for one washer, we can find the volume of the entire object by simply integrating. Right? So if we can find the volume of one washer, we can find the full volume of the object that's being created, which is this guy right here, by simply integrating. Okay, so our goal right now is we want to find the volume of one washer. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's just go back to uh, this little formula right here. If we can um, write the washer, um, the, if we can write the volume of a washer using this formula right here, then we're in business because all we have to do next is just integrate and then we can find the volume of the whole object that's being created. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and look at some of these diagrams one more time and let's just see if we can find a mathematical relationship or let's just try to find how we can find the volume of one of these washers. Now if I look at this diagram right here, hopefully you can see that um, from, from this red dot to the x-axis, that's the radius of the big guy, right? And hopefully you can see that um, from this blue dot, which is on the x-axis, and if I, if I go straight up, this is kind of like, I guess for this diagram, this is the, the radius of the smaller washer, right? So we need to find um, the radius of the bigger washer. Sorry, we gotta find, yeah, we gotta find the radius of the bigger washer, and we, and we also need to find the radius of the, of the smaller washer. Or sorry, we gotta find the radius of the of the smaller function or that small hole there. Okay, sorry about that. And if I go back to my first diagram right here, let me just kind of erase this. Hopefully, you can see that um, if this is my x-axis right here, this is like a point on my x-axis. If I go straight up to my top function, right? This is my top function, right? Hopefully, you can see that this red line here that represents the radius. Of the uh, of the washer, right? The the bigger radius, right? So basically, the bigger radius is simply it's simply the y value of the top function. That's what the big radius is. Okay. Now, if I delete this now, and if I draw a blue circle here or a blue dot on the x-axis, and if I go straight up, this is the radius. Of the smaller of the, this is the smaller radius right of the washer and hopefully you can see that the smaller radius is simply the y value it's the y value of the bottom function this right here is the bottom function right okay so finding the top function and the bottom function are key for the washer method because the top function represents the bigger radius and the bottom function represents the smaller radius, the little r. Okay, and now hopefully that hopefully that's kind of clear. So if I go to any one of these diagrams right here, um, I know that this right here, I mean, this right here is the radius, right? The radius is simply the y value of the top function. Okay, and if I go from here to here, that's the radius, that's the smaller radius, right? So the, the smaller radius is once again, the y value of the bottom function. So hopefully that's, hopefully you can visually see that, okay? Now let's go ahead and summarize a, um, the, the whole volume formula when we're trying to find the, um, the total volume for one washer or the, sorry, let's just go ahead and derive the, the final volume formula when we're trying to find the volume of the entire object, okay? All right, so let's go on to the next page here. So summarizing the washer method. Let me just zoom out here. Zoom out. There we go. Okay. So one thing that you need to recognize is that if you have a washer that's being stacked vertically, so this yellow washer right here, it's being stacked. Um, it's it's being stacked vertically. So if you're being stacked vertically, that means that the washer is being rotated around the x-axis. And if you're being rotated around the x-axis, you're gonna have a dx somewhere in your um, in your diagram. Okay, so let's take a look at this diagram here and let's try to focus on finding the, uh, the volume formula here. Okay, so I think most students can agree that if I go from this red dot all the way to the top here, that's like your big radius, right? And if I go from this blue dot all the way up here, that's your small radius. 
Okay, so how can you find the volume of that yellow washer? Well, I know that the volume is going to be pi times big R squared minus little r squared times the height, right? I know that. Now, what is the height? Well, the height, well, if I go back to my uh, first lesson notes here, um, I said that the height right here is sometimes called dx, dy, or thickness, right? Now, in this diagram right here for um, this, uh, this washer that's being rotated around the x-axis, I have a dx here, right? So that means that my height here is simply going to be dx, okay? And um, hopefully in, my, in, in the other... Um, in the other video, uh, sorry, a few minutes ago, I was saying how that this bigger radius is your top function and this little radius is your bottom function. If I go ahead and look at my top function right here, uh, my top function is represented by y1. And what is y1? Well, y1 is equal to f of x. So that means my top function here, this, uh, this top function here, that's going to be f of x. And then it's going to be f of x squared minus, well, what's my bottom function? Well, my bottom function is basically uh, this green expression right here, right? Okay, that's my bottom function. And if I look at the bottom function right here, it's going to be y2. Right, that's y2. So what is y2? y2 is just simply g of x. So this is going to be a g of x. Let me just delete this here. This is going to be a g of x squared times dx. Okay, so this right here is the top function and this right here is the bottom function very similar to finding the area between two curves and then I can just bring down my pi and uh, where am I integrating from well I'm integrating from sorry I'm integrating from a to B so if I find the volume of one washer I can find the volume of the entire solid that's being generated by simply integrating from a to b so here's my integral from a to b and generally this is the volume function sorry this is the volume formula for a washer when you're rotating around the x-axis okay now if i go over here to the right hand side um what's happening when i'm rotating around the y-axis well when i'm rotating around the around the y-axis my washer is now on a horizontal is now horizontal now and if it's a horizontal, then I know that my height is going to be dy. So if I write my volume for one washer, that's going to be pi times big R squared minus little r squared times the height. Okay. Now, since I'm rotating around the y-axis, uh, remember when uh, we were rotating objects around the y-axis, and if I want to find the area between two curves when you're rotating around the y-axis, uh, basically what you're looking for is that well, if you're looking for the radius here, and since we're integrating from C to D, if you look at between C and D and ask yourself this radius, what does the radius represent here, this big R? Well, that big R is really the function that's furthest to the right-hand side, which is this point right here. Okay, so if I just kind of delete this, sorry. Sorry, this might be a little bit confusing right here, but if I go ahead and make my radius from here to here, that's my, this is my big R, right? Well, my big R is simply going to be x1. And x1 is right, really your right-hand function. Right? It's the function that's furthest to the right. right? This, this function right here is furthest to the right between the integrals from C to D. Okay? And if I delete this now, and if I want to find the volume of, sorry, if I want to find the radius of the smaller, or the, or if I want to find that smaller radius here from here to here, which is little r, little r from the boundary c to d is really the x value of the function that's furthest to the left okay so this small this small r is um representing the function that's furthest to the left hand side when you're integrating from c to d so this part right here this right hand side minus the left hand side that's very similar to finding the area between two curves when you're trying to rotate around the y-axis right so we should also get the same answer or the same kind of logic when we're trying to find uh, the volume of a washer when we're rotating around the y-axis. Okay, so if I go ahead and just fill this in here, whoops, volume is going to be pi. And what is big R? Well, big R is simply going to be the, big R is simply going to be the, um, the x value here, which is going to be, 
uh, it's gonna be x x1 here so let's just change this to x1 squared minus little r which is gonna be x2 squared times the height and then the height is gonna be dy okay and if I want to kind of integrate this from uh, C to D, then I can just do that to find the volume of the entire of the entire object here. So this is how um, this is how um, our volume formula would look like when we're integrating with respect to dy. Okay. And once again, even though I have an x is here, um, basically when we have the real formulas, we want to write in terms of y. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and work on a few problems now. Um, let's go to example number one here. Now, for example number one, I want to find the volume of the solid that's generated when the region. Now, when it says region, that's simply meaning the area between two curves. Uh, and one curve is going to be y equals to x squared, and the other curve is going to be y equals to 2x, and we're being revolved around the x-axis. Now I do have a diagram right here and I do see a washer that's being stacked vertically. So when, when the washer is being stacked vertically, I, I do have a DX because I'm rotating around the X axis. Now we don't need to have a very good understanding of what the final um, shape is gonna look like, but I know I need to find the volume that's being generated by that solid when I'm, being, when I'm rotating around the X axis. Okay, so in this case, um, if I'm rotating around the X axis, I'm going from a boundary of zero to two but I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but let's just go ahead and write the volume, our volume formula here. It's gonna be pi times big R squared minus little r squared times the height. Now I know the height here is gonna be dx, right? Because I'm rotating around the x-axis, right? That's my height right there, okay? So that means that this part right here that I'm highlighting here in yellow, that part right here, Everything in that bracket there that's highlighted in red must be written in terms of x because I have a dx right there. Okay, so just remember that. Okay, now what is what is um, big R? What is big R? Well, big R is simply going to be your top function, and little r is going to be your bottom function. Okay, so if you're integrating. If you're integrating from zero to two, you get this area between these two curves. Now between the area between the two curves, which one is the top function? All right, what's the top function in that yellow, in that region between the, two, between, the, between the two curves? Well, the top function is this blue part right here, right? That blue part is simply gonna be two x. Okay, so that's gonna be two x all squared. And what's the bottom function? Well, the bottom function is this green part right here, which is simply gonna be x squared. So minus bracket x squared all squared. And then I'll put this all in brackets here because I'm integrating with, with respect to dx. My volume is gonna equal to that. I'll put my pi all to the side here. And where am I integrating from? Well, I'm integrating from zero to two. All right, and that is my volume expression right there. Now, before we find our final answer here, let's go ahead and just simplify this. This is going from zero to two, bracket of 4x squared minus x to the power of 4 dx. Okay, and then from here on, we just need to find the antiderivative and then we need to evaluate from 0 to 2. All right, let's go ahead and find the antiderivative of this expression right here. Well, that's going to be 4 over 3 x to the power of 3 minus 1 over 5 x to the power of 5, and I'm integrating from 0 to 2, and then I bring down my pi. Now what I'm gonna do here, just to kind of save some steps here, is that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna evaluate this into my calculator, and if I do that, I should get 64 over 15, and then I also need to include this pi here, so so I'll just put the pi at the very end. So this is my volume of the of the object that's being generated when I rotate those two functions around the x-axis, and this is the washer method. All right, great. Let's move on to the next example. Okay. All right, for example number two, I want to find the volume of the solid that's generated when the region enclosed by y equals to x squared and y equals to 2x is, is revolved around the y-axis. All right, so when you're going around the y-axis, your, your washer is going, to, uh, is going to be horizontal, and that means your height is going to be dy. Okay. So once again, um, similar, to the, similar to the other problem, we have this region that's being 
this region between two curves and that's gonna be rotated around the y-axis and then we're gonna get that bold mean shape right okay so let's start this problem off now you don't need to have a great understanding of what the final shape is gonna look like but um, we need to understand how to calculate calculate its volume all right, so uh, in order to kind of get the problem started, let's just start by writing out the volume formula here. So volume is, for the washer, is going to be pi times big R squared minus little r squared times the height. Now, since I'm rotating around the y-axis, uh, that means I'm going to have a dy for my height. So I'm going to change my height here to a dy. Okay, and that means this part here highlighted in yellow here, I need to write everything here in terms of y right and uh, since we're rotating around the y axis um, uh, very slimmer to find the area between two curves when we're rotating around the y axis and that is we need to find the area that's furthest to the right and then we also need to find uh, the function to the furthest to the left I find the difference between the left the right hand function and the left hand function okay so to see how that's kind of working here is if I'm integrating from 0 to 4 because I'm rotating around the y axis Here's my y-axis right here. Between 0 and 4, ask yourself, from 0 to 4, which function is furthest to the right? Well, that's going to be this purple function right I'm mean, sorry, that's going to be this blue function right there. And that blue function has uh, the equation y equals to x squared, right? That's the equation of that blue function right there. And how do I write this, um, how do I write this in terms of y now? Well, all I have to do here is just take the square root of that and the square root of that. So that means x equals to the square root of y. Okay, so that's my function that's furthest to the right in terms of y. So I put a bracket here. This is going to be square root of y. And then I'm going to put a square there just to kind of complete the rest of that big, the rest of that big radius. And then minus, okay, so ask yourself which function is uh, furthest to the, on the left. If I integrate from 0 to 4, well, that's going to be this green function. And that green function has the equation uh, y equals to 2x. Now, how do I write this in terms of y? Um, if how do I, I how do I get this in terms of y here and isolate for x? Well, this okay. So if I write this in terms of all y, I should get one half y, and then you also I also need to square that. Okay, so this is a bit off here. So let me just write the dy over here. And then I also need to write the volume equation here from pi. And then I'm also integrating this from 0 to 4 because I'm integrating this with respect to y. Okay, let's go ahead and just expand this before I integrate. This will be pi going from 0 to 4. This is going to be y minus 1 over 4y squared times dy. Great. And then let's go ahead now and find the antiderivative of this. This will be pi bracket. Um, this will be y squared divided by 2 minus, minus uh, y to the power 3. And that, this should be 1 over 12. So if I multiply uh, 4 and 3, I should get 12 on the denominator there. And this is going now from uh, 0 to 4. And if I go ahead and put this, in, put this into my calculator here, I should get 8 over 3 and then the pi. All right, so that's my volume that's being generated. Okay, let's move on to the uh, final example here. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. Uh, I want to find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by y equals to x squared minus 1. And that's just a parabola right here. Okay, so when that parabola is being... Um, so I want to find the uh, region enclosed by that parabola and y equals to 0. And this is all being revolved around the line y equals to negative 2. Okay, interesting. Okay, so one thing that I see in my diagram is that I see this vertical uh, disk. So that means I must be rotating around the x-axis. Okay. All right, so this one's a bit interesting because I have this um, y equals to 0, which is basically the basically this horizontal line right here. That's y equals to zero. And basically, I also have a parabola here, which is this blue part. And this is all being rotated around the line y equals to negative 2. So this line right here is y equals to negative 2. OK, interesting. All right, well, um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to kind of visualize the solid that's being formed, but that won't discourage me from finding the final volume here. 
Um, I know the volume for any kind of washer is going to be pi times big R squared minus little r squared times the height. Okay, so what do I know? I know my height is going to be dx because I'm rotating around the uh, x axis and I also have this vertical disc. So that tells me that my height is going to be dx. Okay, so if I'm rotating around the, the dx or the, the x axis here, I know that r represents the, the top function and this is going to represent the bottom function. So let's just see if I can use this theory for this kind of a problem. And um, I'm not sure if I can, but I know that if I put a red dot here and if I go straight up, I know this is going to be the big r, right? That's my big radius. That's going to be this big radius is going to be this radius right there. Okay, so what is that vertical distance? Well, if I know this is going to be 0 and this is going to be negative 2, the distance, this distance right here is the big R, and that distance is going to be just 2. The radius will have a distance of 2, the big radius. Okay, so if I bring this down, that's going to be 2, and then that's going to be squared. Okay, that's great. I have an expression for the big R. Let me delete this now. Okay, now what about my little r? My little r, if I put a uh, a blue dot on the on the on the line y equals negative, negative two. And if I go straight up, this should be the radius of the small guy, right? Okay, so this one's interesting here because um, this is going to be your bottom part, and this will be your top part. Okay, so how do I write a mathematical expression for that little r? I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I'm probably going to need a little bit more room here. Okay, so my top function. It looks like it looks like my top function is simply going to be the parabola, right? All right. If I look at the top function, it's simply going to be the parabola, right? So my top function is going to be x squared minus one. All right. This is the top guy, and the little guy is going to be. Well, what's the value here? Well, that's going to be negative two. So I need to subtract negative two, and that gives me my expression for the little radius. It's going to be the top guy minus the bottom guy, which is going to be x squared minus 1 minus bracket negative 2. And that's going to give me um, positive 2, or sorry, a um, little r. And that little r is simply going to be the top function minus the bottom function. So my top function here was going to be uh, x squared minus 1. And then you need to minus that from this negative 2, right? But all of that is being is being squared. So that's the part that I missed. That's going to be dx. Okay, so sorry about that. So this will be volume equals to pi times, well, this will be 4 minus this inside bracket is going to be x squared minus 1 plus 2. So that's going to be plus 1 all squared close to bracket dx. Okay, so that's a little bit better now. So this will be pi times 4 minus, this will be x squared plus 2x plus 1 bracket bracket dx and then if I collect all the like terms here this is going to be um, this will be 3 minus okay sorry I made another mistake here this is going to be x to the power of 4 here 3 minus x to the power of 4 um, that will be a squared there minus 2x squared dx okay so I'm really sorry I actually made uh, several mistakes in this final example here with my algebra here but um, if I just kind of highlight this, uh, this this yellow box right there, um, you will get this uh, 3 minus 4x squared if I combine that with the 2 squared there. Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate this. And we're integrating from, where are my x boundaries? Well, I'm going from this, this uh, yellow region here, this area here, is going from negative 1 to 1. So I need to integrate this from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so finally I can do this volume equals to pi bracket 3x minus x to the power 5 over 5 minus 2x to the power 3 over 3 and I'm going from negative 1 to 1 if I do all that I get 64 over 15 pi okay and that concludes this video